Today, I am going to take up lesson 3, that is intervening vowels and position. We have learned how to mark the vowels, that is 12 simple vowels. Just like as there are three positions in a consonant to mark the vowels, in the same way, there are three places to write the outlines in the shorthand notebook between two rules. That is called positions of outlines. In case of first place vowels, that is A and A, dash over A and dash over A, when we pronounce a word, if we hear any one of these first place vowels, the first consonant in that word should be written above the line. That is, the first consonant should not touch the line of writing. For example, talk. See, A is the first place vowel. The first consonant in this word is T. It should not touch the line. That is called as above the line position. That is called as above the line position outline. Now, when we pronounce a word, if we hear any one of these four vowels, that is second place vowels, the first consonant in that word should be written on the line. That is, the first consonant should touch the line of writing. For example, take. So, if this is the line, the T should touch the line. Next, in case of third place vowel, when we hear any one of these third place vowels first, then the first consonant in that word should be written through the line. For example, took. Here, who is third place vowel? The first consonant is T and that should be written through the line. So, this is first place above the line, second place on the line and third place through the line. But when a word begins with a horizontal stroke, the rule slightly changes, position slightly changes. When a word begins with a horizontal stroke, which are the horizontal strokes? K, G, M, N, ing. When a word begins with any one of these horizontal strokes, then if there is a first place vowel, then the next downward stroke which comes, that should also be written above the line. For example, C, A, P, cap. K, P. A is first place over. K is a horizontal stroke. The next downward stroke is P. That should be written above the line. In the same way, when a horizontal word begins with a second place outline and with a horizontal stroke in the beginning, then the next downward stroke has to touch the line, not the horizontal stroke. For example, Code, C-O-D-E, code. K is a horizontal stroke, O is second place oval. So the next downward stroke is D should touch the line. When a word begins with a horizontal stroke and a third place oval is there, then the next downward or next upward stroke has to be written through the line. For example, Keep. E is third place over, K is horizontal. The so next downward stroke is P. That should be written through the line. Mill. 
M is a horizontal stroke. So the next upper stroke is L is written through the line. So if you want to write the next upper stroke L through the line, naturally you have to write M below the line so that the next upper stroke passes through the line. Some words, they begin with horizontal strokes and there will not be a, either a downer stroke or an upper stroke. The word contains only horizontal stroke. In that case, what we have to do is, for example, cock. So it contains only horizontal stroke, first place over is there. So it is written above the line. Cake. Here there is A over, second place over. All are horizontal strokes. Here it is written on the line only. But in the word cook, there is a third place over and all are horizontal strokes. So there is a rule. The horizontal strokes should not be written through the line. In such case, even though there is a third place over, it should be written on the line only. So this is about the positions of outlines. Here afterwards, you have to write the outlines according to the positions. So now I have explained three chapters. So those who are joining fresh, what they have to do is, first they have to practice the consonants first, PBT, the, all the groups. And then they have to join the consonants together. For that you have the textbook, Pitman Shorten textbook. So you practice the exercises 1, 2, 3 and 4. Next in the chapter 2, that is lesson 2, vowels also, you take the exercises 4, 5, 6 and 7. You practice each outline, at least you write them three lines each. And then in this exercise, that is lesson 3, what you have to do is again you write the outlines according to the positions three lines each. Next, grammar logs. Grammar logs. In English language, some words occur frequently. For example, the words like A, and D, all, two, etc. They occur very frequently. So these frequently occurring words are called as grammarogs or letter words. G-R-A-M-M-A-L-O-G-U-E-S grammarogs and they are called as letter words. L-E-T-T-E-R letter W-O-R-D-S words, letter words. So for such words, frequently occurring words, instead of writing all the consonant in that word, what we do is we give simple shorthand symbols for them. So that shorthand symbol is called as logogram. L-O-G-O-G-R-A-M. Logogram or also they are called as word letters. W-O-R-D L-E-T-T-E-R-S. Word letters. Hereafter, after each chapter, you will find the heading grammar log and under that some words will be listed. So you will have to practice those several times. Daily you will have to practice and you will have to memorize those short symbols. This is very important. After this, next is punctuation. In short time, how to mark the punctuation marks? Full stop is represented by small X mark like this. The question mark, it remains as it is, but instead of the dot, you have to write a small X mark. For exclamation mark also, the same thing. Here instead of the dot, you have to write an X mark. To indicate a word starts with a capital letter, after writing the outline, you have to write two ticks underneath. 
that indicates that the first letter in that word starts with a capital letter. So after practicing this grammar locks etc., you will have to start taking dictation, that is exercise 11 and exercise 12. Now I will give the dictation at a slower speed and then you will have to write. And afterwards you compare this, yet if there are any mistakes, you can compare from the key to exercises that is given at the end. Now, exercise 11. Get ready. 1. They should ship all the coal on Monday. Here you have to write two ticks underneath. That means M is a capital letter. D. Tent of May. You have to put two ticks underneath May. M is capital. Full stop. You write X mark. Two. Ask the cashier to pay all the money into the bank at two today. Full stop. Three. Miller and Roby, names of two people, M capital or capital, say they hope to get all the lead ready to catch the ship Adelaide. Here the name of the ship is Adelaide. A is to be written capital. You have to put two ticks underneath that outline. On the fourth of the month. Full stop. Four. The bill of lading should reach Canada on the 5th of March. Full stop. 5. Who among all the party may move the vote? Question mark. Next. Exercise 12. They should ask the head of the academy to change the date to who took the padlock of the gate of the paddock question mark 3 up to the date of the party she looked both rich and happy next the head of the bank may leave on Monday. Next five. They ought to change the date on the check to the fourth of the month. So to before taking dictation, these two exercises, what you have to do is take the exercise 11, try to read it, 
write it in longhand and then if you find any difficulty in making out an outline then you see the key to this exercise which is given at the end. So like that you read all the sentences in this exercise 11 and then try to read as many times as possible so that you will be in a position to read the outlines at higher speed. Afterwards only you try to take the dictation. That will help you in a large way. Thank you.